Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm Bob Nixon of the Earth Conservation Corps, and I'm so pleased to have, have you all here today uh, for the unveiling of this really historic sustainability plan. Uh, it literally means the world to us, the Earth Conservation Corps, because what we do is we have young people who we engage in the restoration of the Anacostia River. And today our youth, and already we're seeing the benefits of this plan and, and many of the leadership of many of you here. We already have some of our young people engaged with DDOE and, and other uh, programs here, Metropolitan Police Department, in cutting edge programs, uh, we'd love to tell you more about later, but tracking ospreys this spring. Uh, we're gonna be tracking trash as it goes down the river and com computer modeling. And um, we're also expanding, doubling the size of the wetland out here, uh, all with young people who are really interested in careers in nature. And uh, it really is a historic day, and I wanna thank all of the leaders and citizens across this city and, and really around the world who have helped uh, realize this vision. Uh, 20 years ago, when I stopped, I was driving across the South Capitol Street Bridge and I saw this old pump house with broken windows sticking out from a garbage dump. And I, I was hoping it could be a place where we could start the cleaning up of the Anacostia River. The city allowed us to raise money and restore this building but it was a lot quieter then. We didn't have uh, too many folks around here. Uh, the windows were broken, as I said, and it was pretty cold. We used to heat with a pot-bellied stove uh, here. But uh, many of you here who are here today kept this going, you know, inspired us to keep going, even while you had your own vision of what this city could be. And I'm standing near one of those people today. 20 years ago, he was a, a neighbor uh, who launched Covenant House, and which was a program for homeless uh, young people, very much the same population uh, we were working with. And uh, I'm not sure uh, he even realized it, but he used to, uh, when it got really cold here, we would go there, and we did appreciate the heat and the fax machine. But uh, really what we appreciated most of all was just being with someone who had a real vision and an ability to bring out the best of people and understand what would make the city a better place. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so proud to introduce our mayor, Vincent Gray. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much and good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, let me thank Bob Nixon uh, for the leadership that he has provided for so many years uh, in this city uh, to uh, lead the Earth Conservation Corps. He has been a good friend now for a very long time. And, uh, you know, with partners like the Earth Conservation Corps, uh, we are moving uh, steadily forward. Uh, we thank Bob on our, our goal of making our uh, capital city uh, healthier, uh, greener, and uh, more livable. Um, I, I again want to thank you for what you've done uh, for so many young people. Uh, you're absolutely right. When I was with Covenant House, we were working with young people who were very similar uh, in their needs. And uh, you did it in a, in a magnificent way. We were doing it in a particular way. But at the end of the day, we were connecting the dots uh, around helping young people to find a, uh, a uh, more constructive path. And so again, I thank you for what you've done for so many young people. I know you left for a minute and then you came back. We were all delighted when you came back to ECC. And I just want to applaud you for everything that you've done. Today, I am pleased to hold in my hands, uh, why hands? Because this is the executive summary and this of course is the more complete document. Uh, and this is the final comprehensive plan uh, that outlines the actions that we as a community uh, must take to ensure that the district becomes the most sustainable city uh, in the United States of America. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, everyone who played a, a role uh, in the completion uh, of this important uh, document. Um, I want to acknowledge two people who uh, I think played just an absolutely instrumental role. Two people who are known uh, 
uh, throughout this room. First of all, um, our director of planning, uh, who does so many things uh, for this city, and that is Harriet Tregoning. Harriet. And a gentleman who uh, stepped in uh, and has grabbed the reins of leadership also uh, in the Department of the Environment to help us get to the finish line uh, on this plan. And that, of course, is the acting director of uh, DDOE, Keith Anderson. Keith, thank you so much. And there's so many other people, too, and it's always dangerous to single out anybody, but I'm going to single out Brendan. Uh, Brendan has been on this journey from day one. I remember when I, uh, <laughs> Brendan Shane, Brendan. <laughs> and I want to thank him for bringing his son uh, today as well. This is the way that we become sustainable, and that is by making sure that our young people uh, know the importance of these issues. And um, he is really upset about uh, not being able to go to school uh, this morning. <laughs> um, so again, uh, Brendan, I want to thank you. Uh, for, and uh, I want your son to know what an important role you have played in preserving this city and preserving uh, our environment. So thank you again. Um, this has been uh, truly uh, a community effort. Um, We've had uh, overwhelming support uh, for Sustainable DC throughout the plan's uh, development. I think many of you know that. Uh, at our working group kickoff in 2011, there were 450 people, I couldn't believe it, 450 people who crammed into a room at the convention center. I know when I talked to uh, Harriet in particular about uh, the, the uh, effort at that time, we said, well, geez, I hope we get 50 or 75 people who show up. And uh, I just absolutely couldn't believe it when I walked in and saw that many people. And frankly, since that time, thousands of people uh, have participated uh, in the um, development of the plan, including 700 working group uh, members and literally dozens of district government staff across more than 15 agencies. And isn't that the way it gets done? And that is when you integrate this into the, the entire government. Uh, we've attended more than 180 meetings <clears throat> and events across the district uh, to hear ideas and get feedback from the community, uh, reaching almost 5,000 attendees. So today, uh, we celebrate the results of this collective effort and I want to thank everyone uh, who has been involved. Uh, many, of course, are here today to be a part of this. Today, I also want to reaffirm my pledge that I remain fully committed to the goal that I first stated back in July 2011. And that is, we will make the District of Columbia the healthiest, greenest, and most livable city in the nation for the benefit of this generation as well as generations to come uh, in the future. This is my promise to every one of you. And I certainly want to tell you that we <clears throat> we're already on our way uh, to making this happen. Thanks to the uh, collaborative efforts of the uh, innovative and resourceful people of this city, the District of Columbia is already a model <clears throat> of sustainable practices for other cities uh, in the world. Isn't that nice for the District of Columbia to be a model for others? <laughs> uh, we are what many other cities, um, some cases larger than we are and with more resources, uh, this is what they hope to become. I can remember uh, sitting with mayors from cities all across America uh, at the United States Conference of Mayors meeting uh, in Baltimore. This was back in uh, 2011, and I was reading a report uh, while it was a scintillating presentation going on. Uh, I was reading a report on sustainability, on the sustainability of cities uh, in North America. Uh, at the time, I realized just how much of a leader we actually already were uh, in a number of areas of sustainability and how critical these areas are uh, to our residents, to our economy, and to, uh, and to how our neighbors, neighborhoods function. Consider this. We lead the nation in building healthier, more efficient buildings 
and in rebuilding all our public schools to the gold standard for green buildings. And Brian Hanlon, thank you so much for the work you do to make that happen. We are building green roofs faster than any other city. Uh, we are planting more trees uh, than, any, than at any point in the past. And yes, I do follow this stuff. I was out planting trees uh, earlier in the fall, and we made a commitment to plant, um, I think it was around 6,400 uh, trees uh, this planting season. Did we make it, Keith? Yeah, and I know this is DDOE working with DDOT, with the Urban Forestry Administration in order to get this done, which is important to be able to cross, you know, these agencies to do that. And we are setting some of the nation's highest standards uh, for managing stormwater and reducing pollution as well. Um, we are reducing our impact on the global climate. Uh, over the past several years, our citywide greenhouse uh, gas emissions dropped by a full 12 percent. Um, we still have the biggest bike share program in the United States, uh, although it may not remain the biggest forever. We know that others are coming for us. Um, but remember this, we led the nation in making bike sharing a big part of city life. Uh, we've done all these things while uh, weathering the Great Recession, uh, growing our population by 1,000 to 1,100 people a month, and adding in the last uh, 24 months, we have added 28,000 jobs in the private sector. We are growing bigger. We are growing uh, more prosperous and more sustainable uh, at the same time that these things are happening. Uh, we shouldn't be satisfied with excelling in just some areas. Uh, I think, and I hope you agree with me, that the stakes are absolutely too high. The district government and our partners are taking bold action to move the city further and faster towards sustainability. Our district government now buys 100 percent, 100 percent of its power from renewable sources. No other city in America can say that. And together with residents and businesses and institutions across the city, We've made the District of Columbia the number one U.S. EPA green power community. Our Department of General Services, again under Brian's leadership, has joined the National Better Buildings Challenge to reduce uh, energy use uh, by 20 percent by 2020. But we've not stopped there. DGS is moving aggressively to implement its Game Change initiative that will reduce energy consumption across 20 million square feet of district public buildings by 20 percent in just 20 months. That's a lot of 20s, isn't it, Brian? <laughs> uh, and that will be, by the way, five years ahead uh, of the goal that was set by the U.S. Department uh, of Energy. Across the city, more than 300 buildings are now Energy Star rated. We were just talking about that in the back. Uh, by EPA, and we are uh, rolling out a program that will identify energy and water efficiency of all large public buildings starting later this spring. To manage stormwater, we've surpassed 1.5 million square feet of green roofs and completed our first green alley last summer. How many of you seen the green alley that we installed uh, out in Ward 7? Absolutely phenomenal. Uh, you ought to go out and see it. Just, just walk up the alley and tell everybody you're there to see the green alley. I'm sure they'll believe you. <laughs> um, in any event, instead of, instead of pushing polluted uh, water into sewers uh, that flow into our rivers and streams, of course, these roofs and alleys uh, help uh, filter water and clean our streams uh, and rivers uh, alike. Um, now, just about two weeks ago, I joined the, I signed, excuse me, I signed the Sustainable D.C. Act of 2012 into law. Among other provisions, this legislation will enable the uh, rollout of the uh, Property Assessed uh, Clean Energy Program, which of course is popularly known as PACE. Uh, PACE is an innovative program to finance uh, energy efficiency in commercial and multifamily buildings that we expect will pump tens of millions of dollars into our local economy to increase efficiency 
while creating jobs in a clean economy. I'm also very pleased to report that with the support of the Council of the uh, District of Columbia, uh, the 13 members, we allocated $4.5 million to fund innovative sustainability initiatives across district agencies to test and implement uh, cutting edge practices and we hope to be able to do that again in the fiscal year 14 budget and we hope that the people in this room will work with us uh, to be able to make that happen. A uh, total of 12 projects all together. They will involve local experts, uh, in fact most of them already underway, and stakeholders to save energy, expand gardens, increase composting, uh, restore tree canopy, reduce air pollution, explore renewable energy options, and educate our young people about the environment. Um, so, my friends, I could, I could go on uh, about public and private efforts across our city to adopt uh, the first in the nation green building codes or DDOT's uh, move to high efficiency LED uh, street lights. In fact, there will be 30,000 of those installed in the first wave the expansion of bike share, and of course, uh, the return of the streetcar, which, yes, is, is, is slated to happen in 2013, for those of you who have, may have heard otherwise. 2013. <laughs> that would be this year. <laughs> uh, and this, none of that even highlights the groundbreaking efforts of uh, all of our uh, nine universities, one of which is represented here today, and I'm going to ask him if he will come up uh, when I finish and say a few words. Uh, and that is uh, President Knapp uh, of the outstanding, the great George Washington University. <laughs> Anybody know what school I went to? <laughs> uh, in addition to the universities, the U.S. State Department, and more than 50 uh, diplomatic missions uh, that implemented the uh, sustainability pledges that we all signed uh, last year. Uh, in addition to that, the efforts of private firms uh, and our business improvement uh, districts, our bids, uh, and pioneering efforts with the uh, downtown uh, D.C. Uh, Echo District to adopt sustainable practices through the uh, Smarter Business Challenge. Now, suffice it to say that we believe that these are impressive achievements, but there's still many, many challenges the city is facing that need urgent attention. While our city grows, uh, others may worry that they will be left behind or pushed out. Um, we need one city, a sustainable city, a city that creates the opportunity for all of our residents. So this sustainable DC plan is intended to take a comprehensive look at how we will address uh, four of these challenges. They are jobs in the economy, secondly, health and wellness, third, equity and diversity, and fourth, the climate and the environment. In concert with other major planning uh, initiatives like affordable housing, and I hope you all follow the affordable housing strategy that we just announced, we're going to put $100 million into, uh, into affordable housing. Uh, hopefully Dr. Gandhi will cooperate with us and we'll have that money available to us. And of course the five-year economic development plan uh, and strategy that was unveiled uh, in, I guess, about two months ago. And of course, the um, affordable housing strategy, along with our one city plan, both were discussed in the, uh, in the state of the district uh, speech. Um, the sustainable DC plan, of course, focuses on meeting uh, our challenges with solutions that span seven areas, and these are areas that are not unfamiliar to you all. The built environment, energy, food, nature, transportation, waste, and of course water. These areas of focus continue the themes that we laid out last year in the uh, vision plan. How many of you have read the vision plan? Good, well that's why this looks the same. The cover is almost identical to the vision plan. And we think reflects the remarkable um, public input and best practices research, as well as the analyses that uh, we've received over the past 18 months in getting to this stage. In total, the Sustainable DC Plan includes 32 goals, 
31 targets, and 143 specific actions that will serve as a strategy for making the district the healthiest, greenest, most livable city in the United States of America, if not the world. The goals are, are ambitious, and the vision for 2032 is still the same. For example, we will deliver a fishable and swimmable Anacostia River to the next generation. We will greatly expand uh, local agriculture to grow small businesses and provide healthy uh, food for our city. Uh, we will ensure uh, sustainable growth to manage an increase in population of 250,000 residents. 250,000 residents. That just happens to be on the trajectory that we're on now. Do the math. From now to 2032, figure out how many months there are. What is that? About 20 years, Cheryl? Uh, times 12 would be what? That would be 240? That's a lot of people, man. 1,000 to 1,100 people a month. It'll get us right at that number. And the question is, will we be ready for that? Um, yet another area to reduce energy use by 50% um, and increase our share of renewable energy to 50%. We already are there with our uh, uh, public consumption. Implement zero waste strategies and achieve recycling uh, diversion rates of 80%. And among the many, many others, and you I'm sure read all 143, inspire healthy lifestyles that will reduce obesity by 50%. Across the many goals and targets and actions, there's a lot of detail. But let me assure you that I'm putting the full commitment of my administration behind moving the plan forward and to tracking and reporting our progress. We also are committed to continuing our outreach and our dialogue with the community and the critical partners whose help we need to reach ambitious goals. This is a team effort, and if I can borrow a phrase from President Obama, this is about nothing short of winning the future. We need to create a healthy, green, livable city because it will move us forward together. So what will this mean on the ground? How will this affect the people of our great city? To get healthy food to district residents, we will improve access to corner stores, farmers markets, and full service grocery stores, expand the double dollars voucher program to promote uh, farmers markets, and expand healthy local food options to our school children. In fact, we will be at the farmer's market uh, this evening, uh, the union market, and I hope that you all will be joining us. Uh, to clean the air and provide more reliable local power, we will build 1,000 new renewable energy projects and develop a dedicated wind farm in the region to help power our government. In fact, I hope, I look forward to working with our friends in Maryland. Uh, they've already made a similar commitment. Uh, Governor, Governor O'Malley and I worked well together on a number of things, and this may be yet another one in which we can collaborate. And of course, so that housing, uh, particularly homes for people who are of low income uh, and fixed income uh, are uh, available to our residents, um, we will ensure that all affordable that all affordable housing uh, is healthy, green, and in walkable neighborhoods. To maximize our share of the green and clean economy, we will expand job training as part of the regular school curriculum uh, in our schools and initiate uh, targeted workforce uh, development strategies. These are the ambitious goals and actions, and they will challenge every one of us to be creative and find innovative solutions. But we will achieve, and in some cases, we will exceed these goals. And in the course of it, we will deliver benefits citywide for today's generation and generations to come. 10 years ago, who would have thought the district would be the leader in green buildings, have the largest bike share program, 
or that the district government would be buying 100% of its power from renewable sources. But we are. Who would have thought that more than 400 residents would turn out at a meeting to discuss how we can make this city more sustainable? But you did. Things are changing. Times are changing, <clears throat> and we are changing. We have a bold vision and a fierce determination to implement these actions in our sustainable DC plan so that we can ensure that the District of Columbia <coughs> continues, to be, continues to be the model of sustainability. I want to thank every one of you for joining me here this morning to celebrate the release of the sustainable DC plan. This is an excellent start, we think, and I firmly believe that when our children look back at this effort launched today, and the work that we began together some time ago, they will thank us for taking this step. We need everyone's full participation, especially as we work together to make this plan a reality. We need you. Thank you very much. Let's go to work and get it done. Thank you all very much. I'd like to ask now President Knapp uh, if he would come up, President, of course, of George Washington University. And Mr. President, I want to thank you for being here with us. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. It's uh, very exciting to be here for this release of uh, Sustainable DC Plan. I do want to thank uh, uh, Bob for your hospitality. This is a wonderful space, and uh, I've just discovered it. I, I have this experience constantly of finding new places uh, that I'd like to expose our students to and get them involved in the important work that, that you're doing. I know some of them already are, but I think we can go further in that direction. I'd like to join the mayor in thanking uh, Harry Tregoning and Keith Anderson and all the uh, staff who've been involved in this, and also to acknowledge and to thank the many participants from across the entire District of Columbia who contributed to this plan, because I know it has been a community-wide effort. Uh, we were very proud and honored to be involved as a university on the Mayor's uh, Green Ribbon uh, Committee. Mr. Mayor, I have to say that I don't know how anyone tops the vision uh, that you just stated of making our great nation's capital city the healthiest, the greenest, and the most livable city in America. That's something uh, that uh, is, we can all aspire to, I think, and it's, uh, it's within our grasp, and you've, you've illustrated that with the statistics that you've cited. Uh, we in the university community, uh, actually at your initiative last year, as you know, signed a pledge. All nine of the uh, universities within the District of Columbia signed a pledge with you uh, to commit ourselves to furthering uh, your aspirations on behalf of the city and through the city on behalf of our nation because I do think that our community, our university community, and the district as a whole will become models for what can be accomplished in urban sustainability, not only in the United States, but really uh, around the world. Uh, we're trying to do our part at George Washington. We uh, have a, a, a phrase there, we say we try to practice what we teach. And so we are combining our own efforts to become a more sustainable institution with our efforts to engage our students. And in fact, we, um, we've installed uh, solar installations on uh, solar systems for heating on three of our buildings. We're targeting all of our construction for LEED certification. And just last year, we launched a minor uh, in sustainability that's available to all of our students. And again, the idea is to combine the academic side of our efforts with what we're doing on our own campus so that we can be a truly responsible citizen. And I say, I, I say this on behalf not only of the George Washington University, but of all the universities in the District of Columbia because we share your aspirations and uh, your goals. We stand ready to contribute the expertise of our faculty as we have been doing, and I think that'll become an ever important, more important part of our academic programs but not just the expertise of our faculty, but also the passionate engagement of our students who really are driving us uh, in this direction with their, uh, with their passionate commitment to ensuring that their future will be as healthy, as green, and as livable as it possibly can. So Mr. Mayor, I congratulate you on the achievement of this plan. Uh, we look forward to working with you and all of my colleagues uh, across our university community here uh, in the District of Columbia join me in supporting your work and looking forward to the steps toward implementation that this plan so clearly uh, lays out. Thank you and it's great to be here this morning.
I want to acknowledge some of the other uh, directors that are here, too, who are uh, involved in this effort one way or the other. Uh, Terry Bellamy, who is the director of uh, transportation. Terry, there he is in the back there. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Saul Levin, our uh, director of the Department of Health. Nick Majet, who is right here, who's the director of DCRA. And Jesus Segari, who is the director of the Department of Parks and uh, Recreation. Yes. What's that got to do with sustainability? Oh, I know. You want me to be sustainable, don't you, Tim? <laughs> you know, this is a long-term plan, a long-term vision. After all this effort, what confidence should people have that you're going to be around to implement this? There are other, there are other people running for mayor that have their own livable, walkable plans that may be partially about this, partially different. I mean, why should people buy into this when it's unclear who is going to be driving this train in the future? Well, first of all, Tim, I, I, I don't represent that I went in some back room and did this plan by myself. This plan was done by literally hundreds, if not thousands of people. Uh, first of all, there were 400 people who joined us at the convention center uh, back in November of 2011. And then we had large numbers of people, literally in the thousands, who worked to help effectuate this plan. So. This isn't just, this is a plan that this administration is, is providing the leadership on, but this is a plan that includes the buy-in of many, many hundreds of people. Uh, and I can't imagine, you know, irrespective of whether I'm standing here or somebody else is standing here, that it would change the views of the people who are uh, committed to sustainability. So I don't, I don't think anybody should, should represent that a vision represents the term of office. Uh, a vision should be something that represents what they believe will change uh, society, a state, a city, uh, a jurisdiction, whatever it may be. And that's what we've attempted to do. And um, I, I actually, you know, I actually don't believe that if someone else were standing here, they would, this would be materially different than what it is now because of the fact that there are so many people uh, who are such experts in this area, who are so committed to it, uh, have had such enormous input into getting us to where we are today. Ms. Brazil. Um, I have two questions. Uh, you're about to submit your budget um, to the council in a few weeks and we'll go through the budget cycle. To what extent will the elements of this plan be included in that budget? <clears throat> There will be some elements that will be included, of course. Some already are, uh, because we started working on this long before we got uh, here uh, today. Uh, for example, the $4.5 million that I referenced are the, um, the pilot projects that we've invested in already this year. And um, you know, depending upon how much money we have, we don't know what the answer to that will be, not only because of our uh, revenue projections, but of course, we don't know what sequestration will bring. Uh, around you know March 1st or whenever you know we get some answers on that um, you know we're looking at the possibility of expanding that but we just don't know the answer uh, as yet and some of these things are not necessarily additional dollars uh, for example being able to you know purchase 100 percent of our energy with renewable sources will ultimately be an, an energy savings uh, for the city um, the um, the, the, some of these initiatives are things that will reduce the cost uh, of the city and make us a cleaner city as a result. Oh, I, I'm glad you just made that last point. Uh, many of the initiatives, you're correct, might reduce the cost of the city, but it would seem that many of the initiatives will actually increase the cost to the city of different projects and initiatives. And let me give you one example. If in every community meeting or poll is taken of D.C. residents, Affordable housing is your number one concern and issue. And if, as you indicated in your plan and in your remarks, um, you want green buildings and um, you know uh, other treatments <coughs> added to these buildings, that increases the cost. Now, now, the job of a leader is to make choices, to stand there and make choices. If 
the issue comes down to building, for example, 100 affordable units um, without a lot of these sustainability goals, as opposed to um, uh, these sustainable goals only being able to build 50. What, how do you come down on it? Is your goal the sustainability, or is your goal to build those affordable housing units that are needed in the city? I think our goal is both. Uh, I don't want to build affordable housing that is not sustainable uh, in the future. I mean, we've, we've talked about green roofs. We've talked about, uh, you know, energy efficient uh, homes. Um, I actually think if we do those things, we'll, act, we'll, we'll expand the number of dollars that we have available to us uh, to build affordable homes uh, here in the city. Uh, a lot of what we will prop will invest in, and we're still making decisions on that, will probably be multifamily dwellings uh, as well. So that, you know, in building a roof, you're building a roof for any number of people, not just one, you know, one, uh, one family that, that otherwise may be living in a single family home. So I think as we get further into this, I think we'll find some economies that will uh, feed off of one another between affordability and sustainability, because they both will have the ability. Miss <laughs> Brazil did not laugh at that. <laughs> yes, Mr. Tom. 70% of the jobs in the city are held by commuters. There's a move to, to reduce or eliminate in some cases parking garages, raise parking fees. A couple of those commuters this morning on my way over here said to me, why doesn't just the mayor say that he has a war on cars? <laughs> because the mayor hasn't declared a war on cars. <laughs> I, I absolutely think, and I can't believe that there's anybody who disagrees with me, that we've got to get people out of automobiles. We can't add 250,000 people and add a proportionately large, you know, proportionately uh, similar number of cars uh, to this city. One of the things we know won't expand is the geography of the city. Uh, and frankly, I think we'll be far the better for that. Uh, that's why we're bringing back streetcars. Uh, that's why we're expanding other forms of transportation. We have. I don't know, 56 or 57 miles of bicycles, bicycle lanes now. We want to go to 80. Uh, that's our commitment now. So it's not going to be easy to get people to start to think differently about how they, they traverse the city. But I don't think we have a choice. I wouldn't call it a, I wouldn't call it a, uh, a, a war uh, on cars. I would call it uh, you know, an effort to get people to use alternative methods of transportation. And frankly, you see it already. You look at the bike share program. I think we have 22,000 members in the bike share program now. Is that right, Terry? Okay, 22,000 members in the bike share program. That is a huge increase over when that program started just a few years ago. If I could follow up, are you concerned at all that some of the businesses and some of the federal agencies might move out of town? Like they're fighting to keep the FBI building, but other businesses may move if they find that their employees can't get it. I think, I hope not. I, I, think that, um, I think that the federal agencies, let's use those, I, I, I hope that they're in concert with us, that they're synchronized with us in terms of the need to incentivize people to use alternative methods of transportation. Uh, I don't have a reason to think otherwise uh, at this stage. And again, I know that the next 10 to 20 years to get people to, to behave differently will be tough. Uh, there are people who are so accustomed to automobiles that uh, to get people out of an automobile, the convenience of it as they see it, will not be, will not be uh, easy at all. But I would like to think that we're working in concert with our federal partners uh, to be able to get people easily into the city and, and out of it. Mike. Uh, Mr. Mayor, one of the things in the plan that I, you know, to my eyes would have one of the more practical impacts on uh, the city is this idea of pay as you throw trash collection. That you, they, they, you pay more to, to, to dispose of your trash uh, depending on how much you generate. Um, and that seems like that, that's a big change from what people experience now. If you're, if you're living in a single family home, you essentially don't pay anything for your trash. Um, what's your personal commitment to making that happen? Is that something you intend to pursue in your administration? It's listed as a long term goal, or is this just aspirational? It's, it's long term, um, and we will, you know, everything that's in here, we're committed to do it. Uh, and if we find out along the way that there's some impracticality associated with it, 
will obviously shift or modify that. But what, what you see right now are the things to which we are committed. Uh, some of them will require um, you know, some applied research, uh, if you will, in order to better understand the implications. But of the 143 uh, items that are listed there, you know, the other lists of items that you have. We're committed to all of those things at this stage. And, and it isn't just us either, Mike. It's the people in this room and outside uh, in this city whose thinking uh, contributed mightily to where we are today. There's also introduced a bottle deposit law. As you know, bottle bills have been introduced in the past and have been very controversial. So the what now? A bottle bill? A bottle, a bottle. bottle. Uh -huh. do, you, do, you, do you plan actually introduce a bottle bill? Well, again, some of these goals are short term, some are medium, some are longer term. We'll have, to, we'll have to determine, you know, at what stage we think uh, that we can move forward with some of these, with, with some of these initiatives. We, I don't know that we've set a time pre table on that or not, but we think it's a good thing for the environment to be able to do that. Well, on the bottle bill, it would be a big deal if we look out here this river right here. You listed it, put your own thought about it. You want to move as quick, soon, as a medium or long term. You must have an idea you put it in your plan. Well, we haven't set a timetable yet, Tom. Let, let, us, let us come back at you. This will, this will actually unfold over a longer period of time, as you know. Uh, and we'll come back at you with a timetable uh, on that. Pardon? No, we have no bill that's been crafted to introduce right now. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you all.